Got a loaded episode here on Dallas Mavericks today. Happy Monday, everybody. Harrison Graham, Jeffrey Cooperstein. Before we get into it, and we will have an update on Derek Lively's health, by the way. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family after his mom uh, passed away. That was really tough news to hear, and obviously hard for him, uh, as uh, we all know, that can be losing family members, especially a parent. So thoughts go out to D-Live and uh, the entire family there. Uh, we send our best wishes here from Mavericks today. With that being said, let's dive into today's show. Brutal. Damn, brutal. That's all. Also, damn, brutal. Okay. When you're ready. <clears throat> All right, the playoffs are set, at least with the NBA play-in tournament, Coop, and uh, obviously that doesn't really impact the Mavs, at least not in round one. We've known their matchup with the Clippers for a few days now. Coop did a full series preview. Go check that out if you haven't already. We'll probably take a deeper dive into this matchup later in the week as well, so this is a good week to subscribe. Nice, but to, not, nice to not have to worry about these games. In yeah, the we can kind of just sit, sit at back. home, see what happens in these uh, West games, which I believe are tomorrow. The East games yes. are on Wednesday, so that'll be interesting. Uh, but uh, good rest here. Luka, Kyrie, and some key guys did not play the last two games. Now they don't play till Sunday and probably Sunday night, I would guess, Correct. Coop, with the West Coast. Uh, action being at LA this Sunday, April 21st. I would anticipate this being like the nine o'clock TNT game or whatever. That's what I think it'll be as well. Um, uh, I'm we'll very see, excited. Though. Very it excited. Could, it wouldn't completely shock me if this drew Sunday matinee, that primetime Wimbo that ABC likes. I wouldn't be shocked, but Possible. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I would guess it's probably going to be the late game, but. Look, Coop, part three, it's going to be exciting. And uh, if you think slash want the Mavericks to beat the Clippers, hit the like button. We got to do our part here at Mavericks today. That includes all of you watching. Like this video if you think the Mavs are going to come out on top this time. Because if they don't this time, Coop, uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be yanking my hair out here on the channel. The channel may have to be deleted. Be sure to hit that thumbs up icon, though. Mavs ain't losing to the damn Clippers three times in a row. So be sure and stay tuned with us, and we'll keep you guys up to date on all the latest, including Game 82, where the Mavericks got absolutely pissed on by the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, nobody played, but there were a couple of things to be looking for, and Josh Green and Tim Hardaway Jr. were those things. They were bad. Both of them were awful. Um, they didn't answer any questions that Jason Kidd might have had about who should play in the playoff rotation at all. And it kind of just leaves the Mavs, like I said, with more questions than answers. Yeah, and look, uh, let's take this in a two-pronged approach. The good news is, is the Mavs with their main core, and when I mean that, I mean Doncic, Irving, um, Gafford, Washington, Jones, uh, you know, if you want to throw Cleveland there. Like, the, the main six or seven that have been playing recently, I don't think you have questions there. No. The problem is, is you were kind of hoping, okay, will one of Tim Hardaway or Josh Green kind of elevate over the other because Green had missed all this time and getting him some action to see how he looks. Well, it doesn't look good. And, you know, he's been, you know, on the sidelines, so I don't expect him to come out and shoot 60%. But one of eight in a game that is has no stakes at all, that's Yikes. not great. Tim Hardaway still cold here. So – I don't really know what you do if you're Jason Kidd and you're rounding out this rotation. Like, yeah. Coop, I'll ask you, if you're Kidd, who plays a bigger role in this rotation, Green or Hardaway? I'm going to say Hardaway, and I think it's because of the reasons you kind of outlined. Green's been out for a while, and I believe that if Hardaway is not in the rotation and he's not playing minutes, I think there's a liability off the court there as well, where I think his personality and his demeanor would just kind of diminish. Uh, and you need that if you're the Mavs. You need him in the right headspace. So I think it's going to be Hardaway. Now, it'll be similar to what's been happening over the last couple of weeks where if he's making shots, he'll play. If he's missing shots, then they'll pull him quick and they'll pull the plug on it. But if I had to guess right now who's who's off the bench on Sunday first between those two guys, I would say it's Hardaway. Yeah, I think they'll lean on the experience there and just the guy who's been healthy as of late. So I think if Josh Green's going to crack, like, significant playoff minutes, like, when he does get opportunities, he's going to have to be someone who can knock down open threes because if not, I, I don't think they're going to put him out there that much. I think the bigger answer, Coop, might be 
you might see 30 plus minutes of Dante Exum on most nights, which I kind of want to see anyway because yeah. he's been reliable. He's out of those three guys, weirdly enough, I think he's the best two way player at this point. Uh, we know Tim doesn't defend much. Josh's offense earlier in the year was pretty good, but since he's been back these couple games, that hasn't been there. They've been, they've been hesitant to use Dante Exum more than 25 minutes a game, though, so we'll see if that elevates in the playoffs. But I agree. I mean, I Better think ball handler than both. Like. He, he is your first guard off the bench, and I do think you're going to get a heavy dose of him, and it's be more so out of necessity than anything else. The Mavs need Dante Exum to, to play and perform well because uh, Josh Green and, and uh, Tim Hardaway just aren't giving you that. So who plays more in this first-round series? What do you guys think? Type G for Josh Green, H for Tim Hardaway. I think ideally it would be Green because he gives you more defense. But if I had to guess right now, Coop, I think it will be Tim. I, you know, kid, Kid's a believer of his. He's a vet. He's played well against this team, by yes. the way, in the playoffs before. He was the Mavs' second-best player that last year Carlisle was here in that series. He was more reliable than Porzingis in that series. So. And, and the Mavs probably make the NBA Finals in 22 if Tim Hardaway is healthy because he was having one of his best years there yeah, as well. Decent chance, yeah. So you, you know what he can bring you in the postseason. I kind of think that's why it's going to be Hardaway uh, coming out of into the playoff rotation, the first the first guy off the bench there beside, between him and Green. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens there. By the way, just before we get to our next story, we're going to be live for game one yes. of Mavs Clippers. And – we're going to try and do as many games as we can. The, the schedule's still being worked out, but for sure game one, probably for sure game two, within the NFL draft comes into play here at Chat Sports. So I would anticipate possibly missing game three, but we'll see where it goes from there. But and then, we'll be live for game one on Sunday, whatever time it is, which we won't know until yeah, later in the week. We think it's going to be 9 p.m. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention about the OKC game really quick. Omax and his first extended run He's uh, good, in the rotation. Dude. 15 points, 8 boards. Is there a chance? Is there even a 5% no. chance he plays in the playoffs? He, he won't play in the postseason, but I do think next season he'll fight for some rotation minutes. Um, if you were worried about him and his development, fear not. I think Omax is just fine. I mean, even in the mop-up duty in a couple of those other games, he Maybe. looked pretty good. Yeah. No, I, I'm no, saying oh, yeah. up, he looked pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm excited about there his was one. There sure. was one game, it wasn't the game yesterday, or late in the game, Dude, he does like a dribble pull up from like 18 all net, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, he, <laughs> like, <laughs> he's got some game, man, and it needs some refining, but I think the Mavs took this year as a development year for him, and it, it seems to be paying off so far. So we'll see what happens, but exciting times ahead for Omax. Yeah, we'll dive into him as we go along, probably more in the offseason. But uh, thanks to Prize Picks for sponsoring today's episode of Mavericks Today by Chat Sports. It's Daily Fantasy made easy this is the time to download the prize picks app we got the nba playoffs getting going play in action tomorrow night you got the nhl playoffs dallas stars baby they're getting going in a few days as well pricepicks.com slash clns use the code clns to get a deposit match up to 100 dollars you pick more you pick less on different statistical projections and uh, if you hit, you make money. Two to six player entries, including Coop's pick of the yes. day. This is my pick of the day. Corey Seager, more than uh, half a hit over the Detroit Tigers. I think he'll get that pretty easily. And then Cole Palmer, the Chelsea midfielder, I think four, more than four EPL shots. EPL action, baby. Against Everton. I just think the Chelsea are going to batter Everton today. So there's Coop's special of the day. And by the way, that little green goblin. Uh, next to Seager is a goblin. There's demons and goblins. Goblins lower the statistical projection, easier to hit, less payout. But uh, if that's kind of your strategy you want to go with and hit more consistently, that's a good one to go with. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS. Two to six players. Pick more. Pick less. Make some money. And uh, it takes less than 90 seconds to create an account. So do so right now. Link is in the comments and in the description. All right, uh, let's get back to Derek Lively. Obviously, we touched on the family news there. Uh, what's his status for playing? Jason Kidd said, we'll see when asked if he'll play in game one. I don't love what, a we'll see there. Was that – well, did you take that as a I'm not giving anything away or as a I truly don't know where it's at right now? It probably was a I'm not giving anything away. Could but be a it, combination. I, yeah, that's what I think. I think it is a combination. Uh, we haven't really heard much, man. Obviously, he's dealing with the family stuff, so he's not with the team at the moment, not really practicing. But I don't know. Would it shock me if he missed game one? Probably not. I think we're get, kind of getting to that point. And I would say that is concerning because 
the Mavs need Lively back as soon as possible and obviously take his time with the family thing. The, no one's going to, you know, give him shit about that. But he is a huge piece to what this team does. And if they have a full, li a fully healthy Lively and Gafford, they're a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I mean, obviously you want him game one, but I do wonder if there's a scenario where you wait till game three when you come home. Yeah. And that way he just stays here the whole time with the family situation, maybe. Um, the good news is the Mavs, they have a lot of time. I mean, yes. it's Sunday, six days away. Um, so, you know, in terms of him healing uh, with his injury, then obviously uh, taking care of the family stuff, uh, there's some time here. But, yeah, I mean, look, I'll put it this way, Coop. Could the Mavs beat the Clippers without Lively? Yes. Can they win a championship without him? I think no. I, I don't Agreed. think I don't think Maxi Kleba throughout the course of a playoff run can be a significant contributor. Can he play some minutes? Yes. Can he be your potentially closeout center in 20 plus minutes per game? I don't think so. So I agree. I and think Derek Lively's got to be available for this team in the playoffs. Hundred percent. And I know Maxi is going to get some some run there in the playoffs. But like you said. Uh, if he plays more than 20 minutes a night, I'm not sure I feel very confident about that. They definitely need Lively, man. I know the Mavs sent out a little uh, campaign piece today to try to get Lively on the all-rookie team, and I think we all believe he fully deserves that. Uh, the only problem is y you have guys like Chet and Wembenyama who play his position who are also going to be there as well. So maybe he makes the second team, maybe not, but the Ma either way, the Mavs need Lively back. Uh, for this postseason. By the run. way, I know we give Chet shit for being an L, like him being a rookie is BS because he was in the last draft. The fact that dude went out and played 82, though, yeah. after missing his entire what should have been rookie no year. No one expected that's it. That's pretty damn impressive. And he dude. also would have won rookie of the year probably in any other year that yeah. Victor Wembanyama wasn't playing. Yeah, so. seriously. Uh, let's get Kawhi Leonard. I'll put update in air quotes. Uh, Woj says that the Clippers are not concerned with his knee after missing eight games with inflammation. I, I think one of two things is happening here, Coop. I think, one, this was a true load management. They kind of thought they were locked in at four because yep. the top three had separated. And so they were like, all right, we're going to give you two weeks off. Or, well, really three with this extra week <laughs> now. Or there's actually an issue, and they're playing coy because we still have six days left until game one. Yeah. I can't imagine, like, I can't imagine he's 100%. I mean, do you just sit eight days? I know he's a special cat and he I gets know, special man. treatment, but. I, on Sunday, I, I know uh, Ty Lue was asked after the game about Kawhi, and he said he expects him to play as well, and that kind of falls in line with what Woj is reporting. Uh, so I, this is kind of what I think. I expect Kawhi to play, but you never know when it's Kawhi Leonard. So yeah. hopefully, you know, I, I would like to see him healthy because I want the Mavs to beat the be beat the best team possible, but. Uh, you have no idea what's going on with Kawhi. Would it shock me if he didn't play a second in the series? Absolutely not. Would it shock me if he played all seven games and played 40 minutes a night? Absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, he's a wild card with this stuff. It's always very, like, quiet around his camp. You don't really know what's going on, so. I'll try to hit um, up Uncle Dennis and see what he has Yeah, to we'll say. see what Dennis. Dennis, if you're watching, uh, you're welcome on Mavericks Day. Whenever. Time. Uh, uh, speaking of joining us. Game one, we already told you, but we'll be live. Uh, once we know tip-off time, we'll pass that along as well. Uh, Coop and I live for game one, uh, probably game two. We'll see after that how things are shaking out with the schedule, but uh, we're going to have some fun with it. So uh, subscribe, join us. We'll have play-by-play -play action. We'll have some fun yes, with sir. it. And uh, hopefully the Mavs get off to a good start in game one. Videos between now and then to get you ready as well. Until then, go Mavs.